15 so. days ago. Are you talking over my intro, decisive? Can they hear us? <laughs> yeah. It's happening now, but there's a bit of delay there. <laughs> Welcome to episode 1219 of Toronto Miked. Proudly brought to you by Great Lakes Brewery, a fiercely independent craft brewery who believes in supporting communities, good times, and brewing amazing beer. Order online for free local home delivery in the GTA. Palma Pasta. Enjoy the taste of fresh, homemade Italian pasta and entrees from Palma Pasta in Mississauga and Oakville. Electronic Products Recycling Association. Committing to our planet's future means properly recycling our electronics of the past. And Ridley Funeral Home. Pillars of the community since 1921. Joining me today, making his triumphant return to Toronto Miked, is Derek Kristoff, better known by his stage name, Decisive. Welcome back, Decisive. I am... Well, no, I was trying to think of something uh, clever to say as I'm posting this link. First time for everything. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I almost like want to tell the people, not the specifics, but just let the people know prior to me recording this episode of Toronto Miked, Mr. Kristoff, who I like to call decisive. That's how I, it's okay if I call you decisive, right? That's fine. Some people do. You brought up some subjects that we discussed in detail that completely fired me up like just you just pressed all the buttons and now i'm ready to just go so i don't know what what's going to happen if this episode but it's going to be going to be special it's it's kind of it's 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 a little sad we can't talk about the subject matter by the way the reason we're not talking about is you i don't give a fuck i'll talk about it i don't really want to you i don't i don't think it's i think it's i think it's good for the both of us that we keep it because then there there are certain things about it that'll get me fired up, but you're all fired up. I've I'm never seen up. you. You've never seen me fired up. Yeah. I'm, I'm, but it's the only second time you've ever seen me. I know, but I'm turned on a little bit. <laughs> you know. I've never seen you all worked up. You're usually all nice and <laughs> you're very smooth. You're a smooth talker, but n- like I see the red in your face. It's just It's the sweater. Fury. It's the sweater. Nope. It's fury. It's the fury. <laughs> Tell me more. You're turned on. Is that true? A or little bit. me. Because yeah. it is your anniversary. It, well, yeah, I Happy guess. Happy anniversary. And and I think my wife is tuned in listening right now. So your wife right now is learning that I have turned you on. Yeah, I don't think she's going to be stoked. <laughs> Today is our 13th anniversary. Oh. 13 years. Congratulations, man. That's amazing. So Thank you. You chose to spend your 13th anniversary with me. I'm honored. Yeah, it, <laughs> it created a little bit of a weird moment. Oh. But in fairness, we have been... Uh, relatively loose with regards to our anniversary date. We don't exactly know which day we made it <laughs> official, but we know it was around this time. And she's a teach. My wife's a teacher, and we know it was uh, March break time. So we just right. kind of rounded it off to the thirteenth. Now it could be tomorrow. It could have been yesterday, but we've just recently decided that the thirteenth is the day. I like that littlest hobo jam, uh, maybe tomorrow. Have you ever, uh, of course, rapped over that? I haven't, I haven't rapped over it. Maybe I should. There's like the whistling part, right? It's a true jam, like, and it really brings me back. Mm-hmm. Like, littlest hobo seemed like a big deal when I was a kid. I don't know. I know I have a few years on you, but. Uh, you know who is a famous cameo on Littlest Hobo? Stu Stone. Nope. I'm shocked. Well, maybe. I don't know. He's been on everything. Good when, guess. When I'm talking to Derek Kristoff, my answer to all those questions is Stu Stone. But tell me. It's actually the second most. Oh, can I go? Oh, oh. The second. Michael J. Fox. No, but you're close. Well, kind of. Jason Priestley. It's the second most famous Mike from Toronto. Oh. After you, of okay. course. Okay, let me get this then. Uh, Dude, you should have answered it already. Mike, uh, it's not Michael J. Fox. He's from Vancouver, but yeah, Mike. Uh, is it a Mike or a Michael? It's a Mike. It's a Mike. It's okay. a Mike. Fuck, tell me, dude. The second most famous Mike from Toronto, and you can't answer that. 
I'm just on the spot. I'm having some trouble right now. I've had a, I'm going to tell you later about the week I've had, and you're going to feel bad for me. But why don't you tell me so I, you can put me out of my misery? Who is it? Mike Myers. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I am embarrassed. I'm embarrassed, actually. It's funny. Just today I tweeted that... Uh, tweeted somebody was coming on i should know these things and i was like tweeting that this person's coming on oh it was colin mockery so because oh. colin mockery is my guest tomorrow with his wife deborah mcgrath and they're a very funny canadian couple and and uh peter myers t- liked the tweet peter is mike myers his older brother yeah he's like like music journalist older brother is well, peter that's paul myers okay like, paul there's the paul myers who now lives i think in la or something he fact check okay yeah. fact check you know what of course. So Mike Myers was on Littlest Hobo. Now the question that is still outstanding is whether Stu Stone made a cameo appearance on uh, on on Littlest Hobo last time you were here, Derek. And I want to uh, I might call you Derek. I might call you Decisive. Just roll with me. You okay? keep me on my toes. <laughs> Lots going on, and there's so much <laughs> I want to talk to you about. And then I need to steal a bit of the show to talk about myself. You know, it's called Toronto Mike, not of course Toronto Decisive. Okay, but <laughs> in April 2022, which is almost exactly a year ago. Not your anniversary, but you were here in my basement for episode 1034. Mike is joined by rapper, producer, decisive, a.k.a. Derek Kristoff, as he shares his story of musical success, working with Stu Stone, that's like the fifth time I've said his name, rolling with Saget, getting sued for nobody with a notepad, which I still fucking love. That story is me amazing. Getting su- me getting sued or the song? I don't song? love you were sued. I love the song. Yeah. I, I love uh, Nobody with a Notepad. I might play a little bit of it later. The opiate addiction that almost killed him. Oh my God. Thank Whoa. God you're here. Thank God you're here. Whoa. And his comeback. And we talked for almost two hours, okay? Where do I begin with you? Firstly, how are you doing? I'm v- Now I'm very well. Very well. What were you like before you got here? <laughs> Well, I just mean like now. Yeah. You just mentioned the opiate mm. addiction and mm. lawsuits and... All these traumatizing no zero zero. Well, that's relapses. good news. I and you know, you're pretty clean now, right? Like you're uh, very clean. You do you smoke weed? No, nope, nothing. So you don't drink beer. You don't smoke weed. No, the odd time, my wife and I will let loose and have a little wine after oh. the. But when I say the odd time, I am. I mean, the last time we did it, I believe, was two weekends ago. We had a bottle of wine, and that might have been the first time in like five months. And she got through, like, she has these small wine glasses. I, they're, I don't know, thimbles. They're very small, like just a little bit bigger than shot glasses. Right. I think she drank one and a half of those, knocked out on the couch. I put back a little bit more, but I'm, I'm, I'm a bigger, I'm a bigger human. And yeah, I felt a little buzz, but she just got dismantled. She can't drink anymore. <laughs> and then that, that's it. It's, it's, it's a little sad, but. No, we're man. responsible parents. None of this is sad because you're doing well. Yeah. And, well, uh, alcohol was never, never no. my problem. But, but but it is. It's you know, I'm just so happy that you're uh, you've kicked the opiate addiction yeah. and you're living a clean life, and it allows you to be your your creative self because I think you're extremely talented. I know all this, so I'm not going to repeat episode 1034. But people who haven't heard it should go back and listen. Except you know how much respect I have for you. Like I think you are incredibly talented. Thank you. You know what makes me happy? And th- I don't know, this might sound a little weird to you, but it's my way of like giving you your flowers. And I, I believe that everyone who deserves should be given while they're still around to get it. Okay. I love the fact that I have, like when I came on your show the first time, it was, it was, a, it was a bit of a deal to me. Like Toronto, Mike, you're, you're an important person to our city. And I hope you know that and I hope you believe it because you are. And I was really stoked to come on the show. And now that I'm finally back to releasing music, I'm sure if we go back a year to that episode, I'm sure I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm just working on the album now. I wasn't really working on the album. I was, I was thinking about it. I was plotting, but I, I would never, I could never execute it. But now that as of last November, I'm officially back and releasing music with my partner, Rob Moonshine Baker. I love the fact that I could just hit you up and just be like, Mike, I got some stuffs. Can I come on? And bing, bang, bang. We got a date and you're set. Here, here we you are. Know, do you want to know why? Ma- that okay. makes me happy. I want you to know that. Like, may not seem like a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to me. 
Well, I'll be honest with you, Decisive. Uh, not everybody can send me a note saying, uh, hey, I made a new album. No, you're going uh, to say, I'll be honest it. with you, Derek. Uh, Colin Mockery canceled tonight and... <laughs> you know, I have the crash test dummies later this week. Dude, I saw the tweet before I got in my van and I was going to do something shameless, but I decided not to. When you when you said, like, does anyone have any uh, questions? And I was going to say, yes, shameless. will he do a song with me? Because that would be incredible. But I didn't. I cannot do a Brad. Uh, Brad, what? Brad. What's his name? Brad Roberts? Brad, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's Brad yeah. Roberts. <laughs> dude, they're on the... Fu- can I, I can swear? Is that yeah, okay? Swear. They were on the fucking Dumb and Dumber soundtrack, Yeah, yeah, dude. Peter Pumpkinhead. Yes, dude, I know. The best. <laughs> the best. <laughs> I know. I, well, I, I feel know. like I cut you off. You are going to say something no, about I, me being I, incredibly talented yeah, yeah, and I, you I, love I, I having me here? Five more minutes on that. But basically, I, I, I legit wanted to hang out with you tonight like i'm going through some shit i've had a weird fucking week and like i haven't updated the listener i did update i did it i did an eight minute episode where i kind of went through what i went through on uh for a couple of days like last week you said you had a near-death experience well because i'm the guy to talk to because i've had like three well i want to talk to you okay so i'm not near death experience Yes and no, but yes, it's a very serious thing I'm grappling with right now. Like it's happening right now. So I kind of do want to talk about it. But is one of your near death experiences this uh, oh, tornado? Or yes. Can, can you, can you, <laughs> would you mind if I lean back and listen to you tell me that story? <laughs> like I want that complete story. Like when it happened, because it was after you were in my basement. So it was be- when was I on the show? You were on the show, April. April. 2022 it was the day was august the third okay. exactly because it was my daughter's ninth birthday and mm-hmm. i'm ready <laughs> we decided to spend the day at Alora gorge um shit i was gonna confidently say a quarry up north but i don't know if it's north i, I don't know i just follow the gps i'm Pretty useless. Well, while you tell the story, I'll Google, ge- Google map it. Here. Geographically, <laughs> I am useless, but we 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 go there often. Uh, my my family and I is we love to spend time up there. We go swimming, and a few times we've done. There's like a like a lazy river kind of tube ride, but you're I, again. I don't know if it's like a fucking. I'm okay, I'm gonna or, say just before we go any further, this is very important detail. I'm gonna call it Northwest. Perfect, because okay? you're up north of Guelph. Yeah, like yeah, we do see the Guelph sign. Yeah. So it's like I got a bus left, and then that kind of go no, near where Guelph is happening, and I go up from there, and that's the Elora Gorge Conservation Area. Yeah. So we 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 spend time up there. We every summer we go at least once, but sometimes. You know, we hit up there four or five times. It's it's a it's a nice day. I still have nice things to say about the place. It wasn't Alora's fault, but as we so first we did like the the river the tube tube ride. I guess this is what it's called. But I went with my daughter and my niece. Her uh, my niece. She so my daughter just turned nine on the day, and her ten year old niece was with us. Okay. The two, and your wife is there. Yep. So, so you she, two, and then these two little girls, and my twins. I have. Two, three, well, they weren't three, they were two. No, they just turned three at the time. So you I got three kids. I got a lot of kids. A lot of kids. Well, I have more than that, but that's not to brag, okay? Just <laughs> oh, so here we you go. can still catch up. Okay, but that's amazing. I'm with yeah. you. I'm with you. How many do you have? You have four? four? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've got three. So my wife was with the twins, and I took my daughter and my niece on this tube ride. And we knew they were calling for rain, but. Rain doesn't stop us from, uh, right. well, it used to not stop us. Now I will not leave my house. So the forecast says there's going to be rain. Rain. But you got the nine-year-old and the 10-year-old. The nine-year-old belongs to you. It's her birthday. Yep. And you're on some tubing adventure. At yeah. Zalora. I'm with you. And even the tubing adventure didn't go that great because the kids were a bit freaked out. And I, I kind of understand it. In hindsight, like maybe it's not the best ride to bring a nine and a 10 year old on. I don't know. I would have loved it when I was a kid, but I loved water and shit like that. But they were just freaking out because, you know, there are times where, you know, the water, you you catch a 
current is that the word undercurrent like, sure yeah, yeah and, and it goes pretty fast and Undertow. there's no way to stop it yeah so Dangerous. there are some questionable moments where as a 10 year old i could see you being scared right so both of them were kind of freaking out at moments then there were times where the tube would get stuck and it was just ah. so we finally got to the finish line and i was happy for it to be over i couldn't wait to just get over to the beach area where it's like um that's where the giant quarry is and there are people that jump off this like they're they have security at have you been to Alora gorge no so they have they have this i'm gonna guess that the the i hate using words like wall but like the wall to the quarry i'm not a fucking country kid so obviously <laughs> but it's probably it's like, like a ridge uh, well, it's like cliff diving. Cliff, okay, you know, I think people that's a ridge. Dive? Like, I feel like uh, yeah. that's a ridge. So it's no? probably like sixty feet high. Okay, like it's it's up there, and p- maybe forty. <laughs> I don't know. It's a you thousand talk like feet a city high. Boy. Yeah, I don't know. So I apologize. But okay. so people wait for the security guards to kind of dip, and then right. they jump off. It yeah. happened, and then all of us on the beach applaud because it's pretty crazy. I'm wow. sure you'll look it up, and it'll only be like twenty feet, but it looks very high. And no, I'm sticking with your story. Yeah, it's high enough to have security to stop people from doing it. But people slip through the cracks and jump. So we were on the beach. We were probably there for like an hour. We had just kind of gotten settled. I was reading a book about another famous Mike called Who is Mike Ovitz? Michael Ovitz was a, is a Hollywood agent. I just, I remember all the details. Yeah. So I was sitting on, on the blanket reading a book. My wife and the kids were in the water. And then I, I... Here, I didn't have my cell phone. My cell phone was in my backpack, but I could hear like, you know, the Amber Alert that we get. So that goes off. I look and as I'm going for my phone, let's just say there were like 12 families on the beach. Yeah. All of them are looking at their phones. So I pull mine out and I look. Yeah. Hurricane. No, sorry. Tornado. Tornado. Yeah. Tornado warning. Wow. Now I read it and it freaks me out a bit, but like you never think you're going to be caught in a crazy fucking tornado. Like I've never been in anything quite like that. So I, but, but I did have the sense enough sense to go tell my wife and say, maybe we should kind of make a move. Like, you know, let's, but nobody was rushing. Even the families that were on the beach, nobody was freaking out. So I go down, I get them and you know, there we are packing our shit, folding our blankets. Then I look up to the sky, not where the water is, but, more towards where like the forest area is and it was like a gray and a black like this black mist i guess that i had never seen before and it that is where i started to feel a little bit nervous is this what the uh we referred to as the calm before the storm yes yes see yes that's why you're a show (laughs) i'm a meteorologist Derek. and i am not (laughs) yeah that's why you're a meteorologist and so there then i'm like my wife's name is melanie and i'm like melanie i think it's time to pick up the pace a bit because that is freaking me the fuck out (laughs) so we start scrambling a bit and then when I really got nervous, but I had to hide it because, you know, you're, it's you got bad. Kids. I got to take know. care of the kids. You can't panic. No, I cannot. No. And, but I also don't think what is about to happen is going to happen. I just thought, oh, this is a bit freaky. Let's get to the fucking van and get in the highway and get out of here <laughs> just to avoid getting wet. Like that's yeah. like, a so, storms are coming. Yeah. So then rain starts, but it wasn't a gradual build. It was, was like someone turned a switch, yeah, and the faucet went on, Just, and it was the and it was the heaviest rain I had ever been in. And then my the kids start freaking out. My wife isn't exactly stoked <laughs> either, but I'm still trying to. You're trying to be a dad. I'm trying to keep it solid. I'm like, yeah. okay, come on, come on, come on. We gotta go. We gotta go. And it's funny, my wife and I. Sorry, my wife made a joke about this last night. It's kind of nice that we can joke about it now, but. It wasn't funny at the time. So we start making a move. And now from the beach area to the car, it's mm-hmm. about a two minute walk. Like it's a it's a long path where, okay. you know, so it you're in this beach and then it closes into this path and then to the parking lot. And you're surrounded by, you know, just trees on each side. And it's so you got to remember the rain is pouring harder than I'd ever experienced it like in my life. Like a typhoon almost. It was crazy. And it was dark, like instantly uh, pitch black dark. Wow. 
pile. So there we are making our way up this path. And my daughter starts tripping the fuck out. Like she's yeah. screaming, almost like starting to like freeze up. She's so scared. Yeah. And I'm just trying to like keep her moving, you know, just like walk, walk. Let's just go. Yeah. Let's go. You got to get to that van. That's it. Like just don't, you know, you can scream, you can be scared, you know, but then she starts talking back to me and she kind of stops walking, you know, yeah. but telling me she's scared. And I get it, man. Like it's breaking my heart. Yeah. But at the same time, we got to fucking go. It's like poltergeist when she's like, who's the disciplinarian? Step away from the light. Yeah. Do you remember? That? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, this is, this is, yeah, this is. Well, uh, I kind of had a step away from the light moment where then my daughter just kind of, she wouldn't stop going at me wow. and then i had to yell and I, I apologize to all the listeners out there but i gotta be true with the story like i and you know she's my nine-year-old angel but i swore and i was just like we got to get to the fucking van like right. let's go because now i'm nervous you're in survival mode yeah now. exactly and then we kind of start making a move again she starts again and then I, this is what, and my wife made a joke last night and my exact line was, my daughter's name is Ava. So she's like, what if something's going to happen? And I'm thinking, you know, a uh, tornado, <sighs> wizard of Oz, right? Sure. So I just kind of yell at my kid and I'm like, Ava, I go, this is not a fucking movie. Just get to the fucking car. Maybe three seconds after I say that line, I hear my wife scream and then I feel like I just got fucking bashed by like, right, like my face for, like took the brunt of it. Like it just a hit out of, and I heard the crack. Sorry, I forgot that detail. Okay, I heard this, this it's, but it sounded like thunder and my wife just screamed. And then like a fucking Mike Tyson just uppercut not uppercut right cross another me. mic right yes We're another fam- count mics that's the at third least famous mic from toronto mike tyson <laughs> and just right crossed me right in the fucking face and i like like i zoned out for like two or three seconds everyone starts fucking losing their minds and i don't really i but i because i am one of the strongest men on planet earth i stayed up like it didn't knock me down and i just like kind of got into papa bear mode and yeah. like still get to the fucking van as I'm running. I like one of my wife has one of my other, tw- one of the twins, she's carrying her. And then the other one is kind of close to me. So I scoop her up with one arm and right. I realize as I'm running, I can't move my left arm. Oh my God. And I just kind of look and my arm is straight, just dangling D- out. Dislocated. So, yeah. So a tree landed like just, Basically, okay, so that's what hits you. I'm a fucking tree. Hit, oh my god. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so Okay, so you got everybody in the van though. Yep, it happened. We and no and that's what's crazy. My so so the part I don't I'm going to assume that it was the trunk that landed on my shoulder and a, I guess a branch somehow bashed me in the face as it was falling. I only felt like the face. I didn't really feel the pressure on my shoulder. I guess I don't know, just yeah. So I'm still running to the van. I'm holding one of my kids in one hand. She's very light, just a little bit. Oh, yeah, <laughs> so I'm not light, trying to be like I'm the str- I was <laughs> carrying a small man. And Mike and I just all I can still see my daughter and my niece looking at me terrified. Like just like I've the way they were like a monster because what's crazy is I didn't notice but blood it broke my nose and blood was just gushing cuz it made you can still kind of see the you can still kind of see the cut here. So it cut here and then through my nostrils, just like a faucet. Like I remember my wife giving me a towel and I just dabbed it and it was drenched. But I'm so what, but what makes it terrifying? I can laugh, like I said, I can laugh now. But here I am, you know, limping to the van. My arm is just hanging on by a thread and I'm still like, it's okay, guys. Don't worry about it. We're going to just get in the van, everybody. And But I'm like in a fucking daze. I, I just don't, like this monster is just walking towards the van and they didn't even want to go near me, like just scared. We get in the van and I'm, you know, I basically had to like lift my arm up to yeah, get in. It's dislocated. I couldn't move it and I'm telling my wife, like she's freaking out and yeah. because even the rain is pouring crazy on the van and you're afraid more trees are going to fucking fall. So she's just like, what do we do? And I'm like, well, let's call 911. So she calls 911. We get through, but there's no, 
service. Like they couldn't, we could hear them, they couldn't hear us. So I told her to just start driving. And as we were driving, there was a, there's a pet um, a veterinarian across the street and we saw someone getting in their car and I just told my wife go over there or she made the call to go. I can't remember it, but to go across the street, she ran out, told them, said my husband just got a f- hit by a tree and he actually drove us to the hospital. Oh like we followed him, but he like, yeah, Derek. And here I am. So, okay. So other than yourself, who was, hold on. Uh, you want to hear the funny, another funny part. Yeah, I don't mean to bogart no, this go ahead, moment, go ahead. but so I'm in the hospital, you know, for most of the night, whatever. Then the next day, I, 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 you know, I probably slept like 14 hours. I wake up the next morning. It's all like even my wife. I remember her coming in my in into. I slept in my daughter's room that night because I had to like sit up. I you can't lay down. Just the pressure, like it was the worst. And, and they probably want to put you on Percocets, and you have an opiate addiction. Well, that's a whole other conversation. But my wife had like they had to call no, my I, doctor. No, I, I separated yeah. my shoulder and. It was perks, yeah. but I don't, ha- but, but you can't accept perks. Well, my doctor kind of said it's okay. Like for a situation, like they actually called my doctor who is also like my drug. Okay. Co- I don't know. I hate using the word counselor, but so he basically gave the doctor okay. like, you know, it's fine. But my wife, she was scared. Yeah. You know, and, but I just said, you can be in control of them. Right. And you, you know, right. you can administer. And to right. be honest with you, I don't, I think I took like four and I just, Right. They weren't really doing anything anyway, so it was no point. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So okay, so here's the funny yeah. thing. So she I still remember her coming in the room, just kind of shaking her head like what the fuck happened? And we, you know, we kind of laugh about it as much as we can at the moment. So there it was on the news, the about the storm. In Alora Gorge alone, 150 trees fell. Houses got destroyed. Like wow. it just fucking so, so this was a tornado? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So they reported it, and then the my f- the best part, the yeah. best part of the news report yeah. was the last line where they said, "Luckily there were no injuries." Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and there I am, just like laid out, like That's destroyed. Funny. That's funny. No injuries. Okay, that is funny. Now listen, I'm glad. So other than yourself, though, uh, did anyone else get any injuries? No. That's good news. And that's, you know, I've said this a hundred times, but like, I'm happy that it was me. You know, like if it was, if anyone was to get hurt, I'm glad it was me. No, I'm with you there. It's so much easier to endure something yourself than it is to see somebody you love go through it. It it, it would destroy me to see my wife or, or uh, if it was one, uh, I didn't want to talk about it, but if it was like one of my kids, it wouldn't have probably turned out that way. Right. So it happened to the right person. So let me ask you this, uh, Mr. Kristoff, do you like? Do you think there's some uh, s- s- symbolism here? Like, is is this a call to action, or is this just some random happenstance? And you, it could have been a lot worse. You got away. You got off lucky, but uh, the, you just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, and a, a tornado touched down. Or do you think that this is uh, something you can leverage for your uh, for your in your life? Well, for, I yeah, for sure that. Like, uh, it's possible it could have been wrong place in the wrong time, at at the wrong place at the wrong time. But I've also had, like, a few of these instances in my life. And I always seem to... Have you told me about the other ones? Or uh, do you want to quickly give uh, me the Reader's Digest? They're they're not as... But this is your third brush with death? Yeah. Yeah. The other two... Is one of them the opiate addiction? That's would be one. Yes. Okay. okay. And And there's another one you don't want to talk about. Yeah. Two of them are that. And, uh, you know, I just don't like... It's... Yeah. You, you're moving not, not as cool as this. Okay, well, <laughs> not as cool of a story. Listen. So this is August 2022 when this went down, and then you recovered nicely, though the uh, the arm recovered, yeah, and, and now pretty you're... fast too. Like it's, I, I think went... they pop it back. Do they pop it back in? Cause, no, cause... I had to just stay slinged up, and then I went to not. A, they wanted me to go to physio, but there was another type of doctor that my wife. Um, told me to go to okay. I, that she she sees is certain specialist I can't remember what they're called but I went to see him once maybe twice and he showed me the exercises and I just kind of went nuts like doing them a lot and okay, I yeah. and I also swim a lot so that like swimming's great for ev- yeah. everything just get in a pool if you can or uh, yeah I swim every day so lowest impact uh, workout there is okay so decisive. Uh, how did this affect your music? So at some point we're going to talk about this this new music and I'm going to play some stuff. But 
did this send you back to the notepad? Yeah. Well, it's one of those moments where it's, you know, a, a reminder. It sounds so cliche to say, but it's one of those reminders that you never know what's going to happen. You know, tomorrow we're not promised to be here. You know, I like to quote, like, well, I'm not going to say quote. I'll say paraphrase because I'm sure I'm going to butcher the shit out of it. But someone whom I love a lot, Sam Harris. I don't know if you've watched any of his videos, but. No, but I'm, I'm familiar with yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. He has, uh, he, he refers to life as the only game we play that doesn't have a clock, you know, so we don't know when it's going to run out, you know, so like it, it's important to enjoy every moment like it's the last, like this could be the last time you and I well, sit in this room. Let's do this then. Let's weave my story into yours and yeah. then we'll get to the, the tunes here. And then I need to ask you about somebody who has passed away since the last time we were together. But so what are we talking on here? Monday night. So last Monday night, I went into the hospital because I had this headache for four days. So, you know, it depends who I talk to. Like, I was talking, to, I was on Humble and Fred talking about this. And Fred's like, how could you let the headache last four days? But I actually thought I was doing the opposite. Like, look at me. I only let it last four days. You know what I mean? Like, how long would you endure a headache before you went into the hospital? Before you went to emergency. Well, how intense was the headache? Okay, so if 10 is like, uh, like kill me now, and then one is like, oh, this is nothing, uh, I'm putting it at like a 6-7. It was like a 6-7. It wasn't 10 or 9. It, it's, it's hard to answer something like that, but I am, I don't know. I don't know. I know. So so I, I had a headache. I'm a busy guy. I got lots going on. So I just was taking Advils and moving on with my life. Well, I also never really get headaches. So I almost feel like if that did happen to me probably would have been sooner than okay okay so so, okay so (laughs) So i don't get headaches either i don't get headaches yeah fred's like how could you let it go four days and i was thinking i'm impressed i only let it go four days but okay so on the four so four days of this headache and i talked to my doctor because i'm like this thing won't go away and it's a real pressure thing it's a really interesting headache it was like all around and it was pressure and it was fucking up my creative flow like i got lots of ideas and things i want to my synapses are firing I can't be like focused on this head thing. It was really fucking me up. Yeah. So the doctor's like, really, just like your storm. I was thinking about this when you were describing the storm, right? Like the storm that you uh, in, you survived at Alora Gorge came on really suddenly. Like it ramped up from like zero, boom. There was no, it was boom. There it is. It was no like ramp up like uh it was just boom, full oh, throttle. It just okay. Hit, yeah. So my headache came on the same way on a what was that on a f- Thursday night. And I was like, my daughter was in town because McGill was had the reading week. And then my mom was coming over and then my son was coming over. There was going to be a whole thing because we were going to celebrate like Michelle's here. Uh, I'm wearing the McGill hoodie because of her love, Michelle. But we were having a thing. So I was like, I got to I got to be part of this thing. So I'm popping these Advils to be a part of this thing came on very suddenly. And that's what concerned my doctor. It came on so suddenly. She's like, I'm worried you have a brain bleed. It's very unlikely, but let's go to emergency and rule it out so that I'll sleep better, whatever. So I'm like, yes, ma'am. Like, uh, yes, doc. And I just, I I bike over to St. Joe's. I go into emergency. I'm like, of course you bike. I did bike. Dude. (laughs) That's another, another, you can ask what you want about that. I couldn't imagine a more civilized way to get there. Like I I could bike. I was doing everything. Uber, there's an emergency. But it's a headache. Yeah, I guess. I can bike in a headache, okay? I felt like I could bike it in, you know, you know. So I bike. Again, but though this is four days later, right? <laughs> four, this okay, is on yeah, the yeah. Monday. So All this right. is one week ago today. So you did the weekend celebration? So I, I did it. I just endured it. I even did a swim and I did a couple of bike rides and I did a lot of sho- shoveling of snow because we got yeah. uh, the storm on the Friday night. Where do you night. swim? Uh, my mom's got a condo. So uh, I oh. actually biked to my mom's condo and I did a swim in her uh, swimming pool. So we got to do the next pod at that pool. Okay, I, uh, I love swimming. Love I'll it. go swimming with you. We'll have a love swimming it. episode. Okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. Don't get any water in. Don't get any water in my board here. Okay. Okay, we'll do that. So that's what she. <laughs> I'm said. gonna cut to the chase. Yeah. No. Because no. most people okay. listening to us now have probably heard the eight minutes I recorded. I don't want to repeat everything. Except, I got hit with the news that Monday night they said uh, this is very rare. You have a blood clot on your brain. Dude. I have a blood clot on my brain right now as I talk to you. Okay, and it sounds scary as fuck. And they said the pro- the fear is that it uh, grows and it causes a uh, stroke. So this is it can kill you. This is very serious, and it's very rare, dude. Um, very rare. You get a, I have a blood clot in my brain. They don't know how I got a blood clot in my brain because uh, healthy, you know, forty something year old guys who are active 
don't get blood clots on the brain. Like it's super fucking rare, but I have it. And I get hit with this on Monday night. And they're like, you got you to gotta sleep here tonight. You can't go home because you might have a seizure or a stroke. We got to watch you. So it's like, oh my God, I'm spending the night here. But I was feeling better the next day. The headache went away. Anyways, they let me go home. The treatment for this is blood thinners. I'm popping these blood thinners like fucking candy because that stops it from growing and, and shouldn't get any worse. It doesn't actually cure what's happened. Only time will get rid of this blood clot. But now will I'm at a point. Away? They th- they, they said it will probably be absorbed by my brain in the next six to 12 months. So in the meantime, a long I, time, I know and more than that. I just had a doctor thing today. I've been, I was back in hospital on the weekend. I didn't tell anybody that like there's there's a lot of shit around this, but one of the things around this is that although I'm being tested for it to get the definitive answer, but it's most likely I have a, a gene, like a disease, basically a genetic disease that, means uh, I would more likely to get blood clots. Like this is probably what I have. So I'm being tested for it and everything. But when that comes back positive, I think I'm on blood thinners for the rest of my life. Like I think this is the, this is the uh. rest of my life. So this is all going on right now. Now, near death experience, when I say those words, I feel like I'm being a little melodramatic because, I but at the same time, so. it depends. Yeah, the, you know, <laughs> it's very serious. It leads to strokes. I'm not even out of the woods yet because... The, the neurologist wants to see my brain and want, I have to get an MRI. The neurologist wants to see if I, ha, if I got brain damage from this. Like that's his words. We need to see if you were, if you have brain damage, do you think I have brain damage? Well, I don't know. Well, we're going to find out. You called, you called me Gary when I got here. But <laughs> I, I just thought you're all week when I make, when I fuck up all week, <laughs> I've been saying in my defense, I might be brain damaged. Like I've been dropping that. Ask my wife. That's my, if I, if I forget to close a door or something in the kitchen, it's like I might be brain damaged. So all this is going on. You do now. You do now have the perfect excuse <laughs> to use on your wife. <laughs> it's, yes, like, yes, and I'm going to use it, and hopefully, we'll, oh, we'll see what the results come back as. I well, actually, okay, uh, no, I, so, I, I, so, yeah, I am. I'm a bit like worried right now. Like well, I've, I, I don't. I here, feel... So don't be worried because uh, the only thing I have is because I have a clot on my brain, I get headaches. Like, but they're not debilitating headaches where I got to go in a room and shut the door. I mean, shut the lights and go under the covers or whatever. I can treat these headaches I'm getting because I've had headaches the last few days and I can treat them with Tylenol. Don't treat them with Advil because Advil thins your blood and you're already on the blood thinner. So I have all this new rules I got to live with with the blood thinners. But I'm not taking Advil because I'm not allowed to take Advil. But I can pop a Tylenol if I get a headache and I can just go about my life. I'm having this chat with you and I'm enjoying it thoroughly. So this is where I'm at. I did, a, I did a very long bike ride today. Like I'm physically feeling normal. Yeah. I just have a clot on my brain and I'm taking blood thinners. But all of this has got me thinking like... If I inherited this thing, because it's in the family, so that's why we're thinking that I have this genetic thing or whatever, then I got to get all my kids tested to see if they inherited it. If you have it, they blood thinners is sort of like something they do as a preventative measure because you can get a stroke, right? We're just trying to avoid a stroke here. So all this is going on. I'm literally processing this uh, like in real time. I talked to my doctor like a half an hour before you were at the door. All I can tell you as I deal with all this is that I feel pretty good and I'm fucking psyched as hell that Decisive, what's your name again? I'm brain damaged. Dante. Decisive is here. Dante. And we're going to talk about you, your near-death experience. We're going to find out about your music. I'm going to revisit something that you talked about on the last episode because I've been sharing this story with anyone who will listen, and I love it. But it's just like, here I am. I'm here. Like, I'm here. Yeah. I'm riding my bike. I'm feeling pretty good. You know? Uh, reports of my demise have been greatly exaggerated. I'm still on this side of the dirt. No need to shout out Ridley Funeral Home because I'm right here right now. Right, brother? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm very happy that you're here, but I'm also nervous. When is your next, when do you follow up? This is the pain in the ass of it all. Okay, so there's two specialists that deal with this. So I have a hematologist and I have a neurologist. I guess the neurologist is in charge of the brain. The hematologist is in charge of my blood in this disorder I might have or whatever. So I'm not supposed to follow up with a neurologist for four weeks, and I'm not supposed to follow up with the hematologist for six weeks, but I am supposed to keep taking... And this, this, this fucking blood thinner, it's not one of those things where like, you can take it at seven in the morning, or if you wake up late, you can do it at nine in the morning. Like it's, it's like, they they want you to take it at the exact same time every day, and I've been doing it twice a day. So I've kind of like getting used to that new rhythm of that. 
but I'm also aware that I won't see this uh, neurologist for four more weeks. The MRI is a whole different thing. I got to get this MRI done, but there was some mix up with the paperwork because uh, the neurologist didn't fill out a section and then St. Joe's sent it back and I'm waiting for that. So I got to get the, the MRI done so I can rule out brain damage which I'm pretty sure I'm not brain damaged, but what the fuck do I know at this point? But yeah. then I got these follow-ups and I'm just literally just going to go to every appointment I'm supposed to go to and follow all the instructions that are given to me. But this is like something I wasn't even thinking about. Yeah. You know, when did my headache... So, so two weeks ago, I, was com I felt I was a perfectly healthy late 40s guy planning like I'm going to, you know, now it's like... I got to make it to 50. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's not, of course I'm going to make the 50, but it's just such a wild curveball that I simply did not see coming. Yeah. Well, yeah, there it is. Like, and you're, I, I, I'm going to assume that you, you haven't had like a lot of illness in your life. No, nope. like, no. So that was my first, that was my first overnight stay in a hospital of my uh, life. Like ever. since I was born. Yeah. And then, so now these blood thinners, that's like your new normal now like that's well i'm i'm definitely on blood thinners for the next six to 12 months and then whether i have it so the blood thinners is so this clot doesn't get worse it's uh like it won't grow anymore basically because it keeps growing this blood clot in my brain so now we stop that so i'm dealing with what i have which is why i get the headaches or whatever but it's there and mm -hmm. i'm literally uh just i'm supposed to be like hyper aware if i have any stroke symptoms so there's a lot of like if Monica, and I, this, the joke around here is that like, how will she know if I'm confused or like not making sense? Like, will she even know the difference? But if I slur my speech or my face droops or, there's, you know, if I feel weak or I don't have my balance, like I can't do a walk a straight line. So all these things, if I get one of those things, like I got to go into a merge, I'm, I'm having a stroke. So there's a lot of that going on. So Jeez. I know, I know, what, bud. What have the head headaches been like? Like compared to... No, not as bad. So these headaches, I'm like, they're three, four. So they just kind of sit there and you're aware of them. And then I, if I pop a Tylenol, it gets a little bit better. But like, I'm not even complaining about these headaches. My fear for, which is why I went back to emergency on Saturday, was I had a sense like I wasn't, a, like that was a bad sign. Like if the headache came back, maybe I was having a stroke or my brain was bleeding because I had to do this test to see if there was blood in my brain and everything. And like, I just felt like if I have a headache, that's a bad thing. So I, w I went to emergency just to talk to a doctor. Like, am I allowed to have a headache? And then today the doctor was very black and white, which is basically like, you should have a headache with this thing on your brain. Because apparently I got this big fucking clot on my brain. Like, of course I should have a headache. So I now Jeez, have permission okay. to have a headache. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, this is the only symptom I have. There's yeah. nothing else. Uh, if the headache's not there, and it's not always there, uh, if the headache's not there, I feel 100% normal. I just can't cut myself, and I should avoid, like, falls. Like, I've noticed when I'm biking now, I'm biking a little slower than normal because uh, you can have internal bleeding because of these blood thinners. So oh. I have a, like, there's more danger of this. The blood thinners have its own side effects. But, as the doctor reminded me today, uh, this is not a case where the cure is worse than the disease. This cure is not worse than the disease. We're avoiding strokes here, and strokes kill, buddy. Jeez, I don't even know so, what to well, say. Listen, you, well, listen, you I'm survived your you're... tornado. You yeah. survived your uh, addiction. I'm dealing with this. I didn't ask for this. Uh, the odds of uh, humans getting this is five in a million, but they're mainly women, and they're often sedentary people. Like For a healthy guy like me, a male like me at my age getting this, you can't even find the stats. It's just, it just, they don't see it. None of these people see it. Like it just doesn't happen. Well, you never know. Like that, that's one of my, well, I don't know. Maybe I'm being a bit dramatic, but what? one of my pet peeves, it, I, and I don't know. I think it's because I've dealt with so much illness in my life. Like not myself, but well, I've, you know, I've had my, well, a lot of my problems have been self-inflicted. <laughs> well, addiction's my, not yeah. self-inflicted. Well, it kind of, in a way it is. I don't think of it. Um, but so, like, I've had to take care of my mom, mm. my dad. I've watched aunts right. and uncles pass away. I've, I've seen it all. Right. So, it, but the one of my kind of pet peeves is when people are like, "Oh, he he passed away from." Lung cancer. He never smoked a day in his life. I just, that yeah. statement just irritates me because yeah. you don't know. It doesn't mean anything. Right. Like, not everyone who gets lung cancer it smokes. Like, no. you know, it's just no. any, excuse me, anything can happen. Like, look at yourself. Like, you've never even been, you never spent a night in a hospital before. No. No, you're absolutely right. And uh, I'm thinking now of uh, 
my dear friend uh, Jennifer, who passed away at 29 years old Jeez. from lung cancer, never smoked a cigarette in her life. Yeah, but know? like, look, right? Like you, 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 who knows? But I guess the, the best thing to take away from moments like that is you got to live your fucking life. And the weird thing is, is I remember the day after yeah. it's all I could talk about. Like, and I even, yeah. I, I didn't, I, I posted a video on social media and YouTube you know, I was kind of beaten up and I didn't even really want to do it. Like up to that point, I had never done anything like that before. And and there was part of me that thought it was a bit corny, but I don't know. These voices just kept telling me to do it because I've f- since even then I've wanted to start podcasting and, you know, just posting more YouTube content, which I've started doing. It's a slow start, but I've started, but I was also telling myself, just do it, get out of the, get it out of the way, do one, get past your nerves and your ego. And I did it, you know, but, and that was my message. And it was just like, you, well, you got to enjoy every moment, but then yeah. two, three weeks pass and you're back to the same old fucking Aww. mundane routine. Right. That's the worst part about it. You got to stick with it. You know, like my good friend Lamont Dozier once told me. Well, listen, we're going there now because <laughs> I need to change the channel here. Although, like my best friend Lamont Dozier once well, told here, me. So I was going to remind you, and the reason I'm playing this song, which is Nobody with a Notepad, is that you're a storyteller. I am your a gift, storyteller. You're a storyteller. That's your gift. That's why I always liked your music. You tell stories. So when things happen to you, be it an opiate addiction or uh, a tornado, like whatever happens in your life, you need to release that into the into yeah. the universe. Like yeah. That's your that's your job, buddy. My job is to have people like you over to capture their stories about their their storytelling. So, what am I playing? Let me play it a bit, and then we'll talk about Lamont. All I need is a notepad, open wide, and a sharpened pencil for my thoughts to jot you a letter from my heart. What's that? Can they hear us out there? Yeah. Oh, I don't if know. If you can hear this, but here's how it works. If you can hear in your headphones, they're hearing it out there. Okay, then so, I shouldn't uh, interrupt. You can interrupt if you want. It's, it's your song, buddy. <laughs> well, well, part of it's your song. <laughs> 20% of it. Nice. 20% nice. of this is yours. 20%. Great fucking song again. Now, this is... How old is this now? 13? Oh, what are we looking 15, at? 15, 15 maybe? years. Okay, yeah. Nobody with a Notepad, to me, is a work of art, my friend. Okay, so... When you were here in April 2022, you told the fantastic story about Lamont Dozier and you getting sued basically because you are sampling his work. Yeah. It's in here. In a minute, I'm going to play Lamont Dozier uh, peddling uh, music on the side. But since you were here in April, Lamont Dozier died. Yep. Shout out to Ridley Funeral Home. He's gone. Shout out to Ridley. What was your reaction when you woke up and got the news Lamont Dozier had died? And I didn't really feel anything, to be honest with you, because I don't hate the guy. I did. <laughs> I fucking stole the song. Like, you have to take some. No form part of, of you hates the fact that uh, he nah. picked on the lowest. Of, like, shout out to Lois the Low. Well, I'm under the Carlisle Bridge today. But you're just a guy. How far into the story did I get though? When I told, I don't remember because it is. I thought I had it all. Is there more? Like, did uh, I get to after the lawsuit? Like, after the money was paid out? Well, See that's now. a that's a whole other story. Like th- th- my life is how much money insane. did you pay out? Ten U.S. Okay, ten thousand dollars U.S. The funniest part of that story, and I'm sure I told this part, was we first got a letter, um, asking us for a hundred thousand or no three th- three hundred th- something like that, a hundred yeah. or three hundred. Which to anyone and you made that's, like no money on no, this. Right? That's what I replied back. <laughs> I said we can pay you three hundred dollars. <laughs> uh, and did. they yeah they, they weren't accepting that okay uh, so here i want that story i'm gonna play a bit of the original song that you uh do you get any it's you basically don't get any my it's basically my song well you you're yeah okay 20 you, you know it's a great song it's an amazing song and it fit you so well and it, we can blame moonshine for this right <laughs> yes it's your fault it couldn't have worked for a better artist. So, but it's ironic. So here's the here's the the kicker of the story. So it we're now at the day where we have to transfer wire the money to the lawyer. He had a lawyer named Dan. I will not say the surname, but his lawyer's name was Dan. 
I was working at a telemarketing company at the time. Well, I was doing like, I was doing a phone job. It wasn't actually telemarketing. A company called Sight Dudes. And I get an email from his lawyer, but a personal email. Like, you know, no one was CC'd on it, just him. And it said, hey. And then I opened the email and he says, do me a favor. Once the money is clear, I want you to give me a call. And there's his number. And I replied back to him, to that email. And I just wrote like, why are you fucking suing me again? Have you found something else in my catalog? Now, what was... I was a bit of a... I guess I was just dealing with my fears. But throughout the whole process, I was a bit of a dick. Like, with the responses... And like Daryl Rodway, who's the, you know, founder of Urbnet Records, who was part of it with me, he still sometimes jokes about shit that I said in like, I was just a dick and I was making fun. He had, he actually had a a team of three lawyers that were dealing with it. One of the lawyers, I don't remember his name, but he had awful grammar and it was just whatever. So anytime he would send an email, when I would reply, I would like misspell words and just be a <laughs> fucking dickhead. But I was right. mad. So Yeah, you're, and, you had a right to be mad, by yeah. the way. Because you didn't make any money on the song and now you're forking up 10,000 US yeah. dollars. But I did steal the shit, right? You did. But so, so listen, <laughs> I would steal this too. You hear this? It's perfect. This is gorgeous. Yeah. It's one of my best songs. So anyways, he hits me back. So no, yeah. So I reply back to the lawyer and say, why are you going to fucking sue me again? And he replies back and he just with like, ha ha ha. No, just call me. So I get word. You good? No, oh. Keep talking. Oh, it's I, okay. I, I keep can't talking. Swear. Mike's daughter. You can swear. No, no I swear. Right not gonna, not gonna. Oh, she's gone. And who knows what she's doing? Uh, by the way, her birthday is Wednesday. She's going to be seven years oh, old. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Morgan, on Wednesday. I'm a March. I'm a March baby. Okay. March okay. 29th. Look at that. Okay. Okay. Keep going. Don't worry about swear words. You can swear. So I get word that the money has been sent. So I call Lawyer Dan. And like I, I, I said five minutes ago, my, my life in many ways is a mess it's a movie like it's shit happens where i'm like only me and i almost feel like it happened because i've been given this gift to tell stories and to write them because i you gotta have content you know so i call the lawyer and he's like hey man nice to finally talk you know and i'm like what are you talking about dude and he says well he goes you're gonna think this is weird but nobody with a notepad lamont loves the song and i found out that he was involved with a number of lawsuits like he was suing everyone from like three six mafia to lupe fiasco like well i eventually found out that he was also at the time the number 13th biggest tax delinquent in california (laughs) so lamont was trying to get that money up that that would uh, be a, quite the incentive, I yeah. would think. To, yeah. But so what I found out through lawyer Dan was Lamont loved the song and he thought it was fucking fantastic. And here's a quick story. Orin, when the day that it happened, Oren Isaacs, we, who we talked, we were talking about earlier, he yeah. was the Mike Bullard music supervisor. He was the first person to ever really oh, yeah, work with me. We talked about me. that before the recording. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little hint for uh, the uh, people paying attention. Go yeah. ahead. So, so I remember I remember going to Oren and telling him, I'm like, yo, I'm fucking getting sued. And he's like, what? So I show him everything. And, and I swear to God, this happened. He go, Oren goes to me. I'm sorry that I'm all over the place. but No, I love it. So actually. Oren says to me, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go home. You're going to get paper and a pen. You're not typing. You're getting a fucking paper and a pen. Well, you're nobody of a notepad. Yeah, you're going to get out your notepad and you are going to write the most heartfelt apology. You are going to research Lamont Dozier and compliment his music and say how it changed your life and you're like all the shit. You're going to fucking eat this guy's jizz via letter and apologize (laughs) and thank him for the music. First, I turn and, you on. Yeah. And, and thank him for everything, and you're going to mail it to him. And he said to me, and I swear to God, Oren goes, and I guarantee you this thing gets dropped. 
And I was like, okay, fine. So at the time I was being managed by someone, I'm not going to say the name. I'm driving home and I call said manager and I'm like, hey, so I was just at Oren's place. He told me to do this. Manager says, excuse me. No, you're not going to do that. I'm taking care of it. Me and another guy at Universal Publishing, we're dealing with it. You don't have to send a letter, nothing. Wow. So, But I'm like, yeah, but Oren told me to, that I should do this, that it's going to get me out of this thing. He goes, dude, you're making a big deal out of nothing. We're going to handle it. I go, you didn't get an email saying they wanted 300 fucking grand. Right. And then he's like, dude, if I say we've got it, we've got it. Needless to say, they didn't got it. Th that that relationship kind of oh, fizzled into nothing. Whatever. Wow. They then they then they actually filed the lawsuit because there was we weren't responding to any of the letters. So shit happens. We talk it down to ten US. Here we are. Then fast forward. Here I am on the phone with Dan. Lawyer Dan says Lamont Dozier loved the song. And he goes, you know what you should... The lawyer said this to me, dude. He goes, you know what you should have did? You should have just wrote fucking Lamont a letter and just like apologized. I'm so he upset for you right now. Yeah, so that, that happened. The lawyer told me, he goes, if you would have just said sorry to him, he would have let this all go. Oh he, my God, but, 10 US dollars yeah, and, and aggravation. Thousand, and, not 10 sorry, US dollars. Did I say 10 US dollars? Because <laughs> that's too rich for my blood, you know, yeah. my thin, thin blood. Yeah, but... Uh, <laughs> My thin, thin, that's your memoir title. You know what? My Do you think thin, I'm a storyteller? I kind of have, I don't have the Derek Kristoff talent, but I no, do you have, have a talent. I have this podcast. Yeah. yeah. You know what? Of course you are. You and I need to collaborate more often, yep. I think. Well, we uh, got to write your aside. book, My Thin, Thin Blood. <laughs> <laughs> the Toronto Mike story. The Toronto Mike story. <laughs> so yeah, but the lawyer tells me you should have just thanked him. He would have, or apologized. Oh my he God. And they wanted to set up a duet they wanted to do it. They wanted to re yeah, do recreate it right, the right? song and do it properly. And it just didn't happen. So but this advice, this bad, I know you're not naming this person and no. I know why you're not naming this person, <laughs> but this person who gave you the bad advice, that's not a lawyer, right? That was no manager at the time. And I don't even think anything we weren't negative friends back then him. because I would, I, I would have you on the, the line with, um, Lauren Honickman, we would have sorted this out. But uh, my God, uh, decisive. That story, I so that story, which I actually uh, excerpted out of that episode. So I want to tell people all the details, all the hairy details are in that episode of Toronto Miked with uh, Derek Kristoff, which is 1034. I so recommend it. I mean, we talked about your role of rolling with Saget, for God's sakes. I almost could do the greatest hits right now. But forget the whole opiate addiction and comeback. That's a story unto itself. But you... Fold in. We got a call on that episode from Stu Stone, okay? So Stu yeah. Stone called in. We talked. You dropped some major, like, truth bomb mind blows about Stu Stone. The rolling with Saget thing we talked about. Bob Saget also no longer with us. Shout out to Ridley Funeral Home. But that episode, so stellar. <laughs> but that Lamont Dozier stuff, like, he... And then, you, you know, I recently did a big deep dive into, like, 60s girl groups and, like, the Supremes and everything. Just because I fell into this hole where I was in it for weeks and weeks and weeks. 60s girl groups. And I mean, Lamont Dozier, what a role he played in all that, like the stuff he was up to. And to think of how he affected your life. And that song, which I love, that's like my favorite decisive, like nobody with a notepad. And that jam that you, Moonshine, ripped off, <laughs> which is fine. You're allowed to do it. I guess you're supposed to like cite it. And... Nah, but he uh, uh, he added his flavor to it, though. Of course. Uh, it's fun no, to I don't joke even about moonshine. it, but I, I joke. Moon made it a monster. Of course. I know no. you're joking. But... I'm joking. It, it is. It's just what a perfect storm and what a great story you have there. And, it, and that story only cost you 10,000 US dollars. <laughs> so, okay. I'm going to play something now that's newer than nobody with a notepad, okay? So let's get something going here. Oh. And then you can talk over this. I know you're always wondering, can they hear us now? Well, they'll hear us until this red light goes on, so they can hear us now. Tony lived in a beautiful photograph Used for a postcard, sold in a gift shop Tony pushed his blue boat along an Italian sandy shore Until it hit water at 16, Tony's life was like Dolce Vita. All he needed was his blue boat, old and beat up. Tony wanted to spend his whole life on the open sea. If Tony could, he would row to Costa Rica. Known by everyone who spent time on Roman beaches. From Santa Marinella to Ostia, the kids on the beach saw him. 
as a local hero. He tells stories about exploring haunted ocean regions to battle monsters with his old poison Roman spear the Pope gave him for having the heart of a soldier beaten. It was time for battle, so he bid them all goodbye. The kids would cheer while their older sisters rolled their eyes. Through the crowd, Tony saw a beauty in a red dress. She made the storyteller speechless and his head sweat. Despite the August sun, he had never met such perfection. Gone was his clever wit. Sat by her legs and said, hi. She squinted like she didn't understand what he meant. Waited a second and said the two letters again. She said, I heard you, I'm just disappointed. For a man who fought a war with the spear of poison Against monsters of the sea, you'd at least have some sort of poem I mean, hi is for a simple man, not a soldier Do you say hi to the Pope when he has you over? Tony laughed and said, roses are red, blue, violets You make the sweetest sugar taste like crude spices I forever want to stare into your two eyelids So how do I make you my brand new bride? She smiled and said, hi Ceremony on the sand, a new ring on her finger, Maria held Tony's hand, dried cake on his nose, Tony kissed Maria's lips, he dipped her for a picture, the camera captured bliss, family members clapped while the lovers danced and wept, to songs from an accordion, from stars to morning, a dream they both were in, never wake me from this beauty, leave the needle on this record and projector on this movie, they slipped away for a moment on the water, there once upon a time, where their love story started on, Tony's boat in each other's arms Tony hummed a song to the rhythm of their beating hearts The waves crashed like a cymbal hit Maria said, so you got what you wished for Now you're stuck with me until we have gray hair and wrinkled skin How you kiss me now, you'll have to kiss me then Tony grinned, you're more beautiful now than the first day I saw you So if my math is right and I fast forward a hundred years To when you're 124, you'll be a century more gorgeous So to be honest, I'll kiss you more then than I do now She said you're sweet, but in a century You and me will be nothing but two skeletons in the ground And my Maria's the most wonderful skull and bones She said shut up and serenade me Oh solo mio Staring at the waves He pulled her closer to his chest I haven't chest. listened to this in a while Adio, barca, blow, Well I know we're both lost in this I don't even want to fade it down birds. But I want to hear her So I have questions One is This is the Blue Boat by the way everybody Now this album is called Noblick Gardens Yep That's my new series and this is the third in the series? Yep. It started in November, and we've been going an EP a month. That is the wild and crazy project myself and Moonshine have taken upon us, and we're dropping an EP a month for 12 months. And this is the third installment, and this is my masterpiece, my opera. Yeah. It's, this is a, a epic. This is epic. Yeah. Uh, it's unlike really anything I've ever done, and it's yeah, I'm beyond like proud of this one. It's I feel weird even talking about it like this, but yeah, it's so it's just a full story, and it's it's inspired by a true life, true life tings. Uh, when I was young, I lived in a building, uh, six twenty Northcliff Boulevard. Those who are aware of all of my music, they'll know Derek from Northcliff. And Tony and Maria were the superintendents of the building. And, yeah, I just remember them always being there. You know, they are always in the lobby when we'd get home. I'd see them almost every day, or at least one of them. And one random day when I was 10. And, you know, you got to also understand, like, ah, I'm getting a little bit scattered right. But so I was home doing homework. Or just fucking around on the couch. And my mom was just like, okay, come on, we gotta go downstairs. And I just remember it being... And it's just one of those... You know, you have those weird memories that it doesn't make sense of why it's in your head, but it's just there. Sure. And it was just random, too, because my father, he was a truck driver and he worked nights. And he was up earlier. And I found that weird. Like, why is dad up and dressed? So we went downstairs. And all they would say is, Tony's sick. So... We went down to their apartment. We had never been into their apartment. 
But we walk in and Tony is basically in a hospital bed in the living room. And that oh, just made me feel, feel feel hearing that piano. But yeah, I don't want to get, I don't want to tell the story too much because I want you all to listen to the project at noblicgardens.com. But so Tony was checking out and the part of the story that stuck in my head was I remember him having a conversation with my father, which is what this song is, what this song turns into. And he was telling my dad, because my dad was like, how are you feeling? And he was, you know, saying, I'm feeling a bit better, but once I... Once I'm back 100%, the first thing I'm doing is I'm getting... Uh, well, this actually ties all of our whole episode together because Tony was like, as soon as I'm better, I'm getting a ticket back to Italy. I haven't been home for like 20, 25 years. And every year I keep saying, this is the year I'm going to go back, but I never do. I keep pushing it back. And here this guy is on his deathbed telling my dad, like, you know, I'm getting better. So hopefully in a few months, I'll be back in Italy to see everybody. You know, this album, no- Noblet Gardens, a not, by the way, uh, a tribute to second baseman Chuck Noblet. No. Okay, I've confirmed <laughs> no. that. And have you been holding that in since I, I got here? <laughs> That's been just sitting right in your pocket. Well, fucking Chuck Knobloch. What is, I mean, that was a big deal, Chuck Knobloch. Okay, but yep. not a but tribute not to a Chuck tribute. Knobloch. Not a tribute. What is Noblet Gardens? Noblet is the surname to what many would call my alter ego, Orville Noblet. Gotcha. The first... My first project that I ever released, the book, it actually stood for the Ballad of Orville Noblick. Orville Noblick is the ostrich. My, the ghost, the ostrich ghost that follows me and whispers everything into my ear that I write. So Noblick Gardens is the name of this series that Rob and I are doing. And each EP is different. And The Blue Boat is the first titled EP. So like the first... One was just Nobla Gardens 1, then Nobla Gardens 2. Now this is 3, The Blue Boat. We're now veering into more conceptual projects because, you know, there's I can't do 12 EPs about me rapping about almost dying off pills and get... <laughs> <laughs> so we got to switch it up. And I wanted to flex my storytelling. Yeah. And that's why this is very different from anything I have ever done. Like I said, it's not your typical 16 bar verses and eight bar choruses. Like I rap for a long time on some of these songs. And it's definitely not like background at a party album. You actually have to commit to this. You have to sit and really listen to it. Well, I keep hearing the Hulk Hogan references. So it's right up my alley, yeah, man. There it is. I've yeah. Got the, uh, George that, the Animal Steel. I got the uh, Andre the Giant here. Yep. Congrats, man, because you are a storyteller and you are gifted and uh, it's all come together here. And it really is like part of the theme today. Like you had your, you know, brush with death there and uh, that story was incredible. I'm going through what I'm going through right now and uh, with the, trying to avoid the strokes here, the blood thinner. Yeah. I got a blood clot on my brain and here you are with your, your Magnus Opus. Well, I felt like this was this like this is a story that has been in my head, you know, since I was ten years old. It's something I've been some something would remind me of it at least once a year, and I always wanted to tell it, but I just wasn't ready or the timing wasn't right. And you know, two months ago or a month and a half ago, I was like, well, I think now is the time to tell Tony's story, and yeah. Here we are. Woo! And it is probably the greatest Canadian rap album of 2023. No doubt, buddy. No doubt. Congrats on this. And again, people can go to... Uh, what is it? Where do you want to send people? Noblicgardens.com. K-N-O-B-L-I-C-H. Gardens.com. Somebody dropped the link in the on the uh, pirate stream, live.torontomike.com. In Italy. Interesting tech as soon as thing here. I'm Just note for future right. self is that Maybe the uh, the live stream doesn't get days. stuff I play in the browser sorry, for some reason. So because I'm on Bandcamp right now, You're this actually can't be heard in the live stream, but it's in the podcast. Oh, they're not. So people, they're not. They just heard silence. <laughs> the, the, and podcast, us the podcast, the <laughs> podcast, <laughs> which is where almost everybody hears this anyway, hears it like we hear it in the headphones. So mm. the way it is in your headphones is how it is in the podcast. It's going to sound great. They definitely hear you. Damn, so I'm thinking of Tony wanted to get back to Italy. 
Yeah. Back to the I'm sending you home with a palma pasta like lasagna, man. How's that for a segue? How's that for a segue? <laughs> it's perfect. Did you get one last time? I did, and it was delicious, and I ate it all myself. And did I'm you? Eat, yes. Because <laughs> How many days did it take you? Uh, I it's don't, big, right? Like It's, it's fucking a big, big lasagna. I've got another one, actually. I had to put in a rush order. Bless you, Anthony Petrucci. I said, Derek Kristoff's coming over. I'm out of lasagnas. Because I with that hospital stay, I kind of fell behind on a whole whack of shit. Anyway, it got it arrived today. You're going home with it. I know you don't drink. No. But I do want to put out some love to Great Lakes Brewery. Because those, that's a fiercely independent family-run operation that produces some delicious fresh craft beer. And I will be live at the GLB Brew Pub uh, recording uh, early April. And I got some really kick-ass guests lined up for that. So that's going down. Love GLB and I mad love for their support. You're a tech guy, so I just want to let you know... Mr. Kristoff, that if you have any old tech, any old gear that you need to get rid of, don't don't throw that in the garbage, man. We don't want that shit in the landfill. There's a lot of chemicals and stuff. You got to be careful of how you recycle your electronics. The good people at EPRA want you to go to recyclemyelectronics.ca. Find out a place near you you can drop shit off, and uh, they'll take care of you, man. Thank you, EPRA, for Recycle My Electronics. .ca. Here's a quick story that I'm going to get back to you here before we say goodbye. But I had a long time, a uh, great relationship with a cannabis retail outlet. And we recently uh, ran afoul of some compliance issues with the province of Alberta. And long story short is I'm not allowed to talk about them on this podcast. It violates some Canadian uh, Cannabis Act law. So... <laughs> This went down while I got out of the hospital. I got that phone call the day I got out of the hospital. So I'm down a major sponsor who absolutely loved the relationship. And this is literally a plea to everyone listening. There is a opening to replace my cannabis retail sponsorship. There's room on the back wall here. I had to take down a poster. Wait, what happened? So what did you... Cannabis is kind of got... In Canada, we have a law on how you can uh, promote your cannabis stuff. Yeah. Like, and Alberta's compliance officer had an issue with the fact that people in Alberta could hear Toronto mic and then they could hear an advertisement for a cannabis retail store. Oh, give me a break, dude. So... The lawyers, the lawyers got involved in everything. Not my lawyers, because I'm sort of like I can throw up my hands and say I didn't know. But well, I know a lawyer in case you need one. His name's I'm Dan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dan the man. Yeah. But long, basically, I'm I'm down a sponsor that was going to be locked in for 2023. So the way I work is I don't have time to go out hustling and selling. I'm just producing good stories and having people like uh, decisive over. I had an 89 year old guy over here on Friday. It was fucking amazing. His name is Richard Flowhill. And I got Crash Test Dummies coming up. Crash Test Dummies got their record deal because of Richard Flowhill. It's fucking wild what's going on. I'm really? Just, yeah, that's a true story. Like, it's all the whole. The way everything's connected, maybe that's why I got the blood clot on the brain. Like, my brain, it's all connected. It's all right there. Yeah. I'm doing that, okay, because of good people like Great Lakes Brewery and because of Palma Pasta and because of EPRA and because of Ridley Funeral Home. And I won't name the cannabis company, but they were amazing, okay? They were locked in for 2023, but I'm not allowed to talk about them anymore. Well, I guess I should stop asking questions, but, like, why Go can't, why can't you them. just say, fuck you, Alberta? Like, why do you have to... They... No, I, I can do that. It's they who don't want to do that because if they run afoul, it could be very serious for their business. Oh, so, so the lawyers hit them up. Yes. So And, and you just got hit... their in, lawyers that got hit up by the compliance officer. Dude. And the guy there, who I won't name, except he's been on the show and he's got a great voice, and he was almost crying when he talked to me. He said, look... We would sponsor you to the death, and we love your show, but we need to pause shit while our lawyers figure this out with this compliance officer. And it was like, he was like, he was telling me he ran over my dog, okay, when I got this phone call from the man. Jeez. Long story short is, yeah. this is only the second episode where I didn't mention that great uh, great company in the intro, and I didn't, I'm didn't. i not going to mention them in the outro. They're not going to be on the blog post. Their poster's no longer on the wall. But that's an opening. Somebody's going to step up and sponsor Toronto Mike. Keep this going. I got so many stories to tell. We need to sponsor people now. 
Let's uh, do it. Andiamo. And I have to, ideas, and they're flying out, and we got we got shit to do here. Back to my guest, decisive, natural born storyteller. How fucking proud are you of this Noble Gardens uh, project? I am. I am. I'm, uh, not even just about the project, just to finally be back. It's been like years. Like the thing that freaked me out the most was realizing how long it's been since I released something. Like time flies by. And that's one thing my father always used to tell me. And here I'm rapping about him right now. The song is named after him. Um, Arger's Drive. But as a kid, that's what he would always tell me. You know, the older you get, the faster time is flying by. And I guess another message of just enjoy the moments as they... Enjoy every sandwich. They enjoy every... Warren Zivon. Yeah? Zivon. He was, uh, he got terminal cancer because he was afraid of doctors. He was afraid of doctors. Yeah. So he never went. And then by the time they, he went, they said, hey, it's too late, man. You got it. You got the, you're going to, you're dying. And he went on Letterman and Letterman said, any advice for us? Because uh, he knew he didn't have long to go. And he said, enjoy every sandwich. Yes. And he just went in the studio and like, he was that, it an album it, called The Wind or? You'll Be In My Heart. That's the big jammy. Yeah. That album he put out knowing he was dying. It was incredible. He's a storyteller too. Yeah. You're like Warren Zevon, buddy. Except you're going to live a long, long time. Yeah. I hope so. Can I, I name gotta check stay somebody? Away. I got to stay away from the trees. <laughs> Why don't you just stay away from Elora Gorge, okay? Yeah. I'm going to name check somebody <laughs> who's on the live stream at live.tronomike.com. Uh, tell me if you know this name. You ready? Yeah. Primary Sources. Of course I know it. That's my brother. That's my boy. He's probably running wild on the stream, writing all kinds of messages. He says, drop my name, please. Of He's, course uh, I will drop his name. That's my brother. I got to call him. We're, well, that reminds me. I'm going to plug something quick. Yeah, plug I have, anything. I have a performance coming up. With Primor Mary Sources. I think he's rolling with me. He's going to DJ my set. We're going to tear down Lindsay, Ontario together. Woo! And it, the, that's the show. Kawartha is, right? I don't know. I think I that's like Kawartha. It's like Peterborough area is like Kawartha is. Yeah. I, I don't know. But uh, we're rocking May 6th. We're such city guys. At, uh, <laughs> at uh, the Pie Eyed Monk, Lindsay, Ontario, May 6th. Me. And the God that is primary sources. I love him a lot. He's good people. He would be a funny guy. Maybe I'll bring him with me next time yeah, I come on the show. Sure, yeah, he's, he's a wild man. He's going to come swimming with man. us when we go swimming. Yeah, I got to take condo. him swimming. I keep telling him I got to take. I was supposed to go with him last week, and I, I flopped. Some things came up. But that's, what will happen boy. tonight when you get home with your lasagna <laughs> <laughs> from Palma Pasta and your, your wife's at the door? She's like, happy 13 years, babe. What happens next? Anything happen tonight or uh, just a big hug and a kiss? Uh, we sit on the couch. We uh, we we watch episode two of This Is Us or... So I, two? No. Is that what, the zombie show? Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Last of Us. Last of Us. Yeah, we just started. Well, that was the joke. This Is Us is a whole different Sorry. show. Yeah, well, my wife said the same thing last <laughs> night when I thought it was This Is Us as well. Okay, so you just started it. You're only on two. Cause so the, are you finished it? No, I, I was watching the Oscars last night. So tonight, my wife and I are going to watch uh, yesterday's finale. episode. Is that the finale? I think so. Okay. So, cause, yeah, because Succession takes the spot, like, uh, the final dude, season. Dude, are you a Succession guy? Yeah. I'm up to date on Succession, yeah. That's my life. Like, that is my... Fuck off! Succession is my obsession. See what I did? Woo! Right. I am. I cannot wait. That, I'm counting that as my I early think it's birthday next present. Next Sunday, no, twentieth, twenty sixth, or twenty third, or twenty sixth. Okay. So and I, okay. I actually bought a book recently called Unscripted. I haven't started it, and it's about one of the um, moguls that uh, I'm so horrible with everything. They based I'm it fact, on that because they they did it. Yes. There's a, there's it's based um, on Rupert Murdoch. Yeah, there's a lot of Murdoch in there. There's a bit of Trump in there. And this guy, I think his name is Summer. Hold on. Unscripted. Yeah, go ahead, buddy. I love book. talking TV. Uh, Fact checking. Very few shows capture my attention, but Succession's one that did. Oh, dude. And I like Last of Us, too. Epic battle wait till you for get this, Hollywood Wait till you see Empire. episode three of Last of Us. It's a fucking, uh, like, a, like a beautiful film. I think his name is Summer, Summer and Hill. It might not be Ann Hill. Sure. I just don't want to be staring at my phone while... <laughs> We have precious minutes. That's okay. Anyways, because I got your music in the background. But it's so. it's based on, yeah, one of the one of the dudes, man. Fuck, I sound like a fool. 
No, not, listen, not the bottom that. line Sumner, is we Red both Stone. like Succession. Sumner, yes, Redstone. Yes, of so, course. So, yeah, Succession is my shit. So, anyways, we start watching this, The Last of Us or whatever. Last of Us. And I don't know. Spoiler alert. Wait. No. What are you spoiling? I'm just saying the first 15 minutes of the episode is really... It's oh, it's yeah. it's about the daughter, right? Right. right. Like I'm not going to say anything else. Just the daughter is yeah, a predominant one, character right. for the first 15 minutes, right? Like you know, that's not giving away anything. So I was making a joke because the daughter is I don't it, it is is a brave character. Let's just say that. And I was kind of joking, saying my daughter would not be brave if what was happening happens. And then then my we're staring at the TV, and my wife just goes, "It's not a fucking movie." <laughs> <laughs> mocking my hurricane, my or mocking my tornado. Right. Okay. I love it, man. So it's very good. She's very funny. But that's what's gonna happen tonight. Okay. It would be nice to get a little romance well, we're in. Similar but nights. we're tired. We're tired. Parents. You're tired old people. Okay. Because yeah. we have similar nights planned. Because yeah, uh, I'm gonna kiss you goodbye outside. Take a photo. Yeah. I'm gonna eat something, and I'm gonna watch the Last of Us episode that uh, aired last night. So we have similar nights planned, actually. So, but is should I, am I sticking this show out? Because I did find it to become a little slow. Which one? S- episode. Su- uh, succession. No, Last of Us. Succession. I'm is my religion. Oh, I'm enjoying it. No, I'm enjoying it. And and you're uh, you just finished two. About to start two. And three is next level. Five is incredible. I would stick with it. It's a short season and it's good. It's all filmed in uh, Alberta. Oh, really? So it's all Alberta. My wife's from Edmonton and she's pointing out, especially in episodes uh, one and two there, she's pointing out like the building, this is where I would ever, like it's all Alberta. My wife's from Alberta. What part of Alberta? I can't See remember. See how much do we have in common? Buddy? Yeah, that is, that is we crazy. We have that in common and we have Stu Stone in common. So, uh, will, any plans to... Uh, Collaborate with Stu Stone at some point. Mm, I don't know. He owes me a book. Uh, him and Jamie Kennedy owe me a book. So I heard Stu on. So Stu hasn't done my show in quite some time, actually, uh, because he's been in the states filming a, like a Dark Side of the Ring or some kind of Vice. Oh, that's stage. why he's back out there. Yeah, the wrestling. So he's show. working basically. Yeah, the wrestling yeah. show. So he's working hard, and he's working hard. So he hasn't been on my show in a while. But I did hear him on Jamie Kennedy show, and I'll just say uh, I like Stu better on Toronto Mike than I do in the Jamie Kennedy show. I don't, I don't, I didn't particularly uh, like uh, the way Jamie and uh, I, I don't know. I know that was the way it was back in the day. I'm looking at blowing, blowing up is right over here. I know that's yeah, what, I see uh, that CD. you you know, but but uh, I think Stu's like growing past all that. I think he's beyond all that. Now. Yeah, I, I I could see that. Yeah, they were t- they were telling some good Saget stories. On there, it got interesting. I wish they got a little bit deeper, but I don't think they can. Or it's just, it's better to not. I think there's some things that went down in that relationship. With Jamie and Stu? Yeah, and Bob. And Bob. Interesting. Well, like, they didn't involve Jamie and Stu with any of... I, maybe I can talk freely about yeah, it. And this is what I read from it. Let's hear it. Like, you know, Bob passes away, and they have a bunch of tributes to the guy but they didn't invite jamie or Stu to any of them and if you really want to break it down jamie and Stu were the first to you know ignite that bob saget stick of dynamite like like they rolling with saget is it, i it sounds weird because i you pretty much the, wrote the right, fucking you thing wrote it. but uh he, that it wasn't my idea so i can't I'm, I'm, i'll never claim that but like that was the first time anyone used Bob Saget in that way. You know, he was the wholesome sitcom father, and they were the ones that created this monster side. And which is weird because I just watched Entourage not long ago. I kind of flew through it, and they have Bob Saget in a episode, a you know, four or five episode arc where he's like, you know, a cokehead and talking about blowjobs and you know, just the crazy side the side of Saget that rolling with Saget gave birth to. And you think they were basically uh, erased that history. Was kind erased. Of, yeah. And it felt like they were kind of touching on that. And, but you don't want to say that shit. Cause it, if you're the one saying it, it makes you look maybe douchey or a little thirsty, but I can say it like they should have been a part of all that. Like the guy used this Saget used this song as his walkout song for every standup gig. It was on his roast. It was on his HBO comedy special. I didn't get paid any money at all. That's 
I'm just squeezing that into this part. Oh, but like, the real and talk. then to not use them for anything, like I don't know. It's a, so it's why a bit do you grimy. think they were uh, deleted there? Why do you think they? Were I don't erased? know. I, I yeah. I, I don't. I don't know. That I that I can't. And that would be the like Saget's family that would make that like sort of uh, maybe. But there were also that. other comics involved, right? Like I think Jeff Ross and John Mayer. They were a part of. It, right. But like you know, I was what it was such a trip to watch like John Stamos on Instagram posting my fucking song, you know, like driving in his car and lip syncing words that I wrote, and you know, it had an impact. Now I just I feel like Rolling with Saget was a bit too early, you know. YouTube wasn't what YouTube is. Oh yeah, because this is the conversation I've had with Stu many times, which is why weren't they Lonely Island? You know what I mean? Because Lonely Island yeah. does the same thing and blow, blows up in a different level than. Uh, but it was later, you know. I don't know. Later. There maybe wasn't the platform, you know. Like like right. I said, YouTube really wasn't what it became at the time, and it was just maybe two years too early. You better ask someone. I wrote that line. I can tell you all the parts I wrote. Yeah, talk did, over Did this. I tell you about the part that didn't make it? Did I talk remind about the last me. episode? Remind me. So I wrote, I think, maybe one or two drafts of it. And then they took, they kept certain chunks. And then, add, like, changed shit. Contributed their own lyrics. But there was one part that I was so proud of. And I, I guarantee you, I probably told this the last time I was here, but it's, it's it hurts me deep inside because it would have been hilarious. Now, I'm sure you're aware of the Jay-Z song, 99 Problems. Of course. So there's the part where he gets pulled over by the cop and he does. I don't, I don't, I didn't pass the bar, but I know a little bit. Yep. See, you know, it. that was perfect line to use in that moment. <laughs> so, but I had a part where I think there's a part in this work. I haven't listened to it in a while, but like. The cop pulls over Bob Saget and them in the car or whatever. So, but I had a line in the original version. I wonder if Stu even has the demo because I also had to record it. So I recorded the whole song, sent them a version to go off of. But there was a line. So the cop pulls over Bob Saget and then the cop goes, you know, do you know why I'm stopping you for? And then Bob Saget was supposed to rap because I'm young and I'm black and my hat's real low. Do I look like a mind reader, sir? I don't know. And fucking Stu told me MTV was like, no. No. <laughs> no. But how fucking amazing would have that would that have been hearing Bob Saget going because I'm young and I'm black and my hat's real low? That would have been unbelievable. Woo! Just but it like didn't you, happen. You know what? We're doing our own trilogy here. This is part two of three. So they're, yep. we're absolutely going to do a part three. But I got to say, I'm glad you uh, survived the tornado. I'm glad you're still doing well. I'm so fucking excited for you. This uh, Noblet Gardens, uh, no relation to Chuck Knobloch. This Noblet Gardens project is like your magnus opus. And you're at the peak of your creativity. And you're a master storyteller. And I got to say, I love hanging with you. I love rolling with Decisive. Yep. Write we, me a rap did, song, Rolling with Decisive. All right, Rolling with Toronto Mike. And listen, shout out, you know, Ill Vibe, who did my uh, theme song. Illy, just so you know, I might be commissioning uh, Decisive to write me a new theme song. I don't know. but uh, I can't I can't take away <laughs> from can't Illy. can't top Illy. <laughs> can't take away what he's built. He's a good man. But thanks for this, buddy. We're going to do uh, Take the Picture. I'm going to get to the lasagna, and we're going to do this again, man. <laughs> In that order. You, you down for it. round three? I'm, I, you, dude, you tell me. I'll be here. I don't even live that far. I'll see you tomorrow night. I will be here. <laughs> we got to start our uh, This Is Us after show or whatever the That's fuck right. the show's called. <laughs> we'll do it for succession. We'll, we'll, it's I will do that, dude. I'm, 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 actually fuck trying off. To, I'm actually trying to think of something for the... And this is the last season, too. Yeah. I, I, was not, I didn't know it was I the know, last. I only, I only saw that because it was advertised during the Oscars and it said final season. I had no idea either. Yeah, I saw the trailer like two days ago. What'd yeah. you th- quickly, what, I know this is your goodbye music. <laughs> what did you think of the Oscars last night? Uh, what did I think of it? I thought uh, it needed a couple of slaps, I think. Uh, yeah, it was boring. <laughs> oh, Oscars are boring. it's kind of always... Yeah. I said this to my wife. I said... Why do we watch again? Because it's always boring. Yeah. I think it's always boring. But meanwhile, I think I lasted the whole time. I watched the whole thing. I think we're all watching in case something happens, which has only happened like once. Yeah, ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> that that dress, that white dress was pretty irritating. Did you see that? I think her, the artist's name was Tim's. And it was like this l- giant oh. like veil. Or I, do, I, I didn't notice that. I didn't notice that. 
Now I'm even trying to remember. Uh, my my mom yesterday, my mom was telling me the host that was going to be Steve Kimmel. She thought his name was Steve Kimmel. I thought that was funny. I'm like, oh, Steve Kimmel. But no. no That's you know, what you called me when I got <laughs> here today. I did do a little family Oscar pool where we don't do all the categories. We just do the big 11. I call it the big 11. I went 10 for 11 and won the pool. Like I actually, I missed out on supporting actress because I didn't think Jamie Lee Curtis was going to win. But other than that... I ran the table. You picked Angela Bassett? Uh, actually, or I picked, Michelle, I picked or... the other woman from uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Yeah, I kind of thought it, it was going to be a clean sweep except for Brendan Fraser. See, I knew Brendan was going to win. I thought he'd win, but I yep. did. Uh, I nailed everything. Uh, and it's good for a Canadian. I'll just shout out Torontonian Sarah Pauly, who won one of the uh, screenplay awards. And those screenplay... Oscars she did? The best. Yeah. She won Best uh, Adapted Screenplay last night for uh, Women Talking. And Amazing. I, I got to shout out a guy named Steve Cole who listens to the show who taught me how to say women. I was saying woman and women the same. And he explained to me that actually when you say women, it's like W-I-M-M-I-N. Like it's women. Because I was reading it like it was spelled and it would sound the same as woman. This that's how like, you say it? Women? Like, that's the proper way? Well, that's how he taught me to say it. And since I started saying it, no one's complaining. So I think I've nailed it. Decisive. We've got to wind down. i got shit to do. I got a, a, you got an anniversary to get to. i got to go home and kiss my wife. And I've turned you on, so you're all set. Yeah, I'm fired up. <laughs> I'm bonered up. And that. <laughs> these blood thinners that's are gotta like be boner in, pills, That too. better be in the title, too. Decisive <laughs> bonered up. And that brings us to the end of our 1,219th episode. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Toronto Mike. Wait, 1219? Yeah. Is that? Are you serious? Yeah. Look at this. But I'm running out of song, but yeah. Oh, my God. What are you going to do? 1219, 1219. Hey, Derek, show me something. I was just about to order this today. Now I wonder if this is a Okay, side. while you look that up, our friends at Great Lakes Brewery are at Great Lakes Beer. Palma Pasta is at Palma Pasta. Recycle My Electronics are at EPRA underscore Canada. 1219 room that's fucking wild okay. dude I was gonna order a book called room 1219 I might have to do it now this is weird Ridley Funeral Homer at Ridley FH see you all next week follow Decisive he's at Derek Kristoff on Twitter noblicgardens.com noblicgardens.com and if you or anyone you know dies Ridley Funeral Home all day long and eat Palma's Kitchen Pizza <laughs> Lasagna. You blew the line. In the reception. Shout out to Great Lakes Brewery. <laughs>